Hello everyone, Weather Jamaica here. Welcome to this updated video on weather across Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. It is Sunday evening, August 25, 2024. Now before you jump into it, please ensure that you guys like the video. I'd really appreciate it if you guys get this video up to 100 likes. If you don't know by now, that's how the YouTube algorithm works. We all like the video and then the YouTube algorithm pushes the video out to more persons who are in the path of these tropical systems. So we can keep everyone safe, especially during the peak of Atlantic hurricane season. That's August through to October. Share this video with your friends, your co-workers, your relatives, and even your church brethren. And subscribe if you haven't yet done so. Leave a comment down below letting me know what the dad's been like in your year recently. Also, feel free to ask any other related question that you might have about the future of the other in your specific area. Alright, so if we take a look at the US National Hurricane Center 7 day graphical tropical weather outlook that just came out at 7.23 pm Eastern Daylight Time, which is actually 6.23 pm Jamaica time, there's no new area highlighted for possible tropical cyclone development over the next 7 days. If we take a look at the surface map of the Atlantic for this evening, we can see numerous troughs as represented by these broken orange lines. One right here across Florida, one right here to the north of Puerto Rico, another one right here to the north of the Leeward Islands, and another one right here to the north of the Eastern Caribbean. We can see a tropical wave right here to the east of the Caribbean, and we know all of these entities are pushing from east to west, all courtesy of the easterly flow of winds brought about by the ridge of high pressure to the north. We can also see that stalled out frontal system that's still affecting portions of the United States. And if we take a look at the visible satellite images of the Atlantic before the sun went down, we can see all of these entities being displayed like what we saw on the surface map. The frontal systems clouds bring overcast skies and some thunderstorms to portions of Florida and the southeastern United States. The numerous troughs plaguing the northern waters right there to north of Puerto Rico to northeast of the Caribbean. A tropical wave right here across the waters of the main development region and we can also see clouds associated with numerous troughs and uh, tropical waves right here across the eastern caribbean right there we'll be talking more about the rest of the caribbean so then later on let us focus our attention on the prediction that was made in yesterday's video about the weather across jamaica for today sunday august 25. it was stated that we would have received some morning rainfall across the kingdom of some eastern parishes in jamaica and that would have been some early morning rainfall like that. And then would have received some afternoon rainfall across the kingdom of some central and western parishes in Jamaica. And we know eastern parishes, you know, we're talking about those parishes in the county of Surrey. So Portland, St. Thomas, Kingston, St. Andrew. While central parishes, you know, we're talking about those parishes in the county of Middlesex. So St. Anne, St. Mary, Manchester, Clarendon, St. Catherine. While western parishes, you know, we're talking about those parishes in the county of Cornwall. So Hanover, St. James, Trelawney, Westmoreland, and St. Elizabeth. And what ended up happening? As early as 5.35 a.m., the infrared satellite images were posted and they highlighted that we were receiving some isolated thunderstorms on the infrared satellite images right here across section of Portland and St. Thomas, especially St. Thomas, pushing from northeast to southwest right there, especially eastern St. Thomas got in on the brunt of these early morning thunderstorms. And... Some of these clouds might have spilled into portion of Kingston St. Andrew and even section of St. Catherine because there was a comment right here on our Instagram page confirming the early morning rainfall right here. We had a purple rain, a mommy stating had a little drizzle in Portmore earlier to signify that there was indeed some of the rainfall that spilled into portions of St. Catherine. Then during the afternoon, we definitely got in on the afternoon rainfall that was predicted across mainly central and western Jamaica. So even although Kingston and St. Andrew is an eastern parish, it's more so on the western edge of the eastern county of Surrey. But we know we're talking about Middlesex and we're talking about central parishes. But they definitely got in on some of the rainfall. We can see the inferred satellite image that was posted here and if we take a closer look we can definitely see the high cold cloud tops as represented by the blues green yellows oranges reds and the sparkling white dots that we know represents amount of lightning strikes if not lightning flashes so we definitely had the thunderstorm activity across the portion of kingston st andrew section of st catherine sections of the cockpit country including northern st elizabeth southern trelawney southern st james sections of westmoreland got in on the thunderstorm activity as well and we definitely had the confirmation from some of our followers here on our twitter page live teaching stating showers in falmouth trelawney wealthy kids stating thank god for the rain in port moore chirp is stating nice shower with a little wind here in meadowbrook 
Normally, this would be enjoyable for a Sunday afternoon snooze, but no sooner had the breeze picked up, JPS took leave of us. So I guess they had a poor outage right there. Even on our Facebook page, we had the comments coming in. Jackie Bean stating, raining up here in the cockpit country of South Trelawney. Lisa Taylor Saunders stating here, as well in St. James. And then... If we take a look here even on our Instagram page, we had a comment coming in. Panton Giovanni stating Spanish Town had rain. And even portions of St. Catherine, including the Bogwa Gorge, got in on some amount of rainfall. We can see that even by around 2 or 2 p.m., they were definitely getting in on that isolated shore activity. We can see some of these vehicles pushing on by with their windshield wipers on definitely had some afternoon uh, rainfall right there even that looks like a jdf vehicle pushing by with the wet weather that was taking place and even if we take a look earlier the road was a bit drier <laughs> that was about 30 minutes earlier and 30 minutes later we saw how soaking wet it got to prove that they were indeed getting in on some isolated shower during the afternoon and keep in mind that if you'd like to see more live streams like this, just visit C Jamaica's YouTube channel where they show live streams of the corporate area, halfway tree, crossroads, the Kingston Harbor, the City View, Barbican. So if you'd like to see that, just visit them. Subscribe as well. If you take a look here at the latest infrared satellite image of Jamaica, which just came out at let's see. So this just came out at 25 minutes past the hour, so 7:25 p.m. And we see that majority of the clouds associated with thunderstorm activity have definitely cleared out by now. We do, however, have some isolated parts of grayish or whitish looking clouds off to the south of the island. And if we take a look at the latest Cuban Doppler radar images, we can match what we're seeing with that. Some of the rainfall definitely right there off to the south of the island as represented by the greens and the yellows that represent some of light to moderate rainfall. And... If we take a look at the very latest Cuban Doppler radar image that just came out at 8.30 p.m. at Jamaica time, we can definitely see, well, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Cuba, which is actually 7.30 p.m. Jamaica time, we can actually see the rainfall right there off to the southwest of the island. So as much as we're not seeing much in the way of the high cold cloud tops on the latest infrared satellite images, we do see some spots of whites, some milky colors. Some of these clouds definitely have some rainfall within them and the Cuban Doppler radar images confirm this. So there's definitely some rainfall still being had across section of St. Elizabeth as we speak. Maybe section of southwestern Clarendon, southeastern Manchester as well. But if we take a look at the very latest from C Jamaica's YouTube channel showing crossroads as of 7.37 p.m. Not much taking place across the corporate area. Just as we saw on the satellite images and Doppler radar images, we, they're definitely seeing the stars tonight. Not much in the way of rainfall or cloud cover whatsoever. If we take a look at the temperatures right now, we can sell about 28 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay, 26 degrees Celsius in Kingston. And by about 5, 5 a.m. on Monday, temperatures should have down to about 25 degrees Celsius in both Montego Bay and Kingston. Taking a look at the temperature forecast for tomorrow, we're indeed glad. To announce that for 18th on Monday, which is actually 1 p.m. on Monday, we're seeing more gray colors across the Western Hemisphere in general. Well, the Caribbean and the Southeastern Atlantic. I'm going to say Western Hemisphere. Maybe some slight yellows for Jamaica. But for the most part, we're seeing average or normal temperatures for the month of August. And we see that being represented by the gray colors as we can see by the key on the right. And we see the slight yellows that represent 1 degree Celsius above normal temperatures. I know the normal temperatures for the month of August across Jamaica are about 91 degrees Fahrenheit. 91 degrees Fahrenheit is about the same as 32.7 degrees Celsius when calculated. So we should be receiving anywhere from 32 to 33 degrees Celsius at most for Jamaica's temperature on Monday. So please ensure that you stay out of the sun during peak hours and you stay hydrated as much as possible. More fruits and vegetables than anything else. If we take a look here at the Sahara and dust forecast for 2 p.m. on Monday, we can see that majority of it has cleared out. Just some Sahara and dust right here across the main development region and Africa pushing from east to west. And it's not even that vigorous of a plume at all to cause very hazy skies or trigger some amount of respiratory illnesses in some person. 
So we're indeed grateful for this. Majority of the Caribbean, including Jamaica, gonna be receiving more in the way of very blue skies, if not rainfall for our week ahead. If we take a look here at the wave forecast, let's load it up. All right, so the wave forecast for tomorrow still showing not much change. The lighter shades of blues to darker shades of blues that we can see that is represented by the key on the bottom right that we know is the equivalent of 0 0.5 a meter to 1.5 meter wave heights. And that's because the winds are not going to be that strong at all, averaging anywhere from 5 to 10 to 15 knots at most, maybe averaging 20 knots. Where we see the brighter greens and we see the general flow of the winds across the Caribbean coming in from the east. But as it relates to the close-up of Jamaica in terms of the wind forecast, yes, that easterly flow for sure. And we're going to be having all of that air piling up across the section of some central and western parishes during the afternoon. That's where we have the blues that represent the least amount of winds. That's where we're going to be having those cumulus clouds becoming mid-level rain clouds, if not upper-level cumulus nimbus clouds, for us to get that daytime heating or diurnal convection. And with the upper-level winds coming in from the northeast tomorrow, it's going to be bringing more in the way of overcast skies to section of some southern parishes if they're not already getting in on that thunderstorm activity something similar to what we had today look at this this is what we're referring to so when we had the thunderstorms across the kingdom of some central western parishes we saw that the upper level winds the winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere were pushing those high cold cloud tops off towards the southwest and that definitely brought more overcast skies to section of southwestern saint elizabeth section of westmoreland for sure some of the times these thunderstorms can definitely spill into those spots as well so that's what we're talking about when we're referring to upper level wind shear so we're going to be receiving more of that on monday and if we take a look right here at the actual rainfall forecast this map from the euro and this map from the gfs are both showing 9 a.m eastern standard time which is actually 8 a.m jamaica time and where do we see the consensus for rainfall across section of eastern jamaica and the waters to the northeast of the island definitely out to sea to the north east of portland and some of this rainfall could affect sections of maybe eastern st thomas if eastern portland if it's not actually cloud cover maybe it's some isolated rainfall so it's not a 100 percent certainty that it's going to be some rainfall but we'll see if it's actually rainfall we are more inclined to believe that it's actual rainfall when we see those darker shades of blues but we see more lighter shades of blues and we see it on both the year and the gfs model so look out for maybe some partly cloudy skies if not some isolated showers for that time skipping ahead to about 4 p.m eastern standard time which is actually 3 p.m jamaica time look at what we see here both the euro and the gfs models are in consensus that portions of central and western jamaica are going to be getting in on some amount of afternoon rainfall euro trying to incorporate eastern jamaica gfs not showing much of eastern jamaica maybe section of kingston st andrew section of st catherine st mary st and section of northern clarin and northern manchester st elizabeth Shalane, st james hanover and westmoreland i would say that both the euro and the gfs models are in consensus with this forecast and even later on, we're still seeing some amount of blues represent rainfall in and around the island. This is about 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is actually 8 p.m. Jamaica time. And we still see the blues represent rainfall surrounding the island on the Euro, affecting portion of the island on the GFS. We'll see exactly what unfolds with that. You remember even last night, the forecast was for some night rainfall across sections of the island. Not saying that we're not receiving that rainfall right now in some southwestern spots as seen on the latest infrared satellite images and Doppler radar images. But we'll see exactly what unfolds tomorrow evening for sure. And I'll definitely be here to keep you posted. And both accumulated precipitation forecast maps from the Euro and the GFS are in consensus that it's going to be raining somewhere across Jamaica tomorrow. This map from the Euro and this map from the GFS are both showing all the rainfall that's expected. From now up until 3Z on Tuesday when calculated, that's all the rainfall that's expected from now all the way up until 10 p.m. on Monday. And we see the GFS model right here showing some slight oranges across western Jamaica that represents all the way up to 0 0.5 for an inch of rainfall. The Euro model right here showing more of the rainfall across section of maybe Kingston St. Andrew all the way up to 0 0.61 of an inch of rainfall. We'll see exactly what unfolds. Either way. It's gonna be raining somewhere in Jamaica tomorrow and we're indeed grateful for that. We'd like the rainfall to cool down the temperatures, keep the water in our pipes, keep the water running in our rivers for sure. We're in the month of August. In Kingston, we receive almost 100 millimeters of rainfall. That's almost four inches of rainfall, as you can see right here on this bar graph. 
In Montego Bay, we just receive almost 5 inches of rainfall. That's almost 125 millimeters of rainfall. And you can do the math yourself, considering that 1 inch of rainfall is about the same as 25 millimeters of rainfall. And you can also visit weatherandclimate.com to find out about what your specific parish receives throughout the year. Alright, so that's it for the forecast across Jamaica. Let us focus our attention on the rest of the Caribbean. So we can see numerous clouds right here pushing from east to west across the southern portion of the main Vermont region associated with the intertropical convergence zone. We know the air from the northern hemisphere meets the air from the southern hemisphere and all of this rises and forms clouds, thunderstorm activity. We mentioned the frontal system still brings some clouds and showers to portion of the northern Bahamas and section of Florida. Numerous troughs to the north of the Caribbean and the northeast of the Caribbean. Maybe a weak tropical wave right here across the windward islands and these are thunderstorm activity across the portion of Central America as well as Northern South America. And if we take a look at the Doppler radar images of the Northeastern Caribbean, we're going to be seeing what's unfolding. So definitely we see some isolated showers, maybe some hit or miss rainfall right there off to the west and south of Puerto Rico. Not much taking place across Puerto Rico, the US and British Virgin Islands right now. But maybe in and around Antigua and Barbuda and west of Montserrat to the east of Dominica, that's basically it. And if we take a look at earlier today, we can see that portion of northern and western Puerto Rico, and more so northwestern Puerto Rico, even in sections of the US Virgin Islands, got in on their fair share of some afternoon rainfall. And if you take a look right here at the Barbados radar, we can see rainfall associated with that tropical wave bringing some shower and thunderstorm activity. Definitely right there to the south and west of Barbados, more so to the north and west of there as well. So maybe sections of St. Vincent, sections of St. Lucia, Martinique getting on some rainfall right now, Dominica as well. And if we take a look, at the southern portion of there, not much taking place across Trinidad and Tobago right now at all. But if we take a look at the weather, we have Doppler radar images. We can see some rainfall affecting portion of northeastern Venezuela right there on the Trinidad radar. We can also see some rainfall affecting portion of Colombia, Honduras, some rainfall to the east of Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, northern Guatemala getting in on some of the activity, sections of Cuba getting in on some rainfall, western Florida as well. And that's really so where it's going to be raining within the next 24 hours. This map from the Euro and this map from the GFS are both showing where it's going to be raining from now upon till 3 on Tuesday when calculated. That's all the rainfall that's expected from now upon till 10 p.m. on Monday. And we can see the rainfall right here being represented by what we see in the key on the right, all the way up to 0 0.1 of an inch of rainfall, all the way up to what? One inch of rainfall in the red. Even some purples right there that represents up to three inches of rainfall. So the most in of rainfall is definitely going to be across portions of Costa Rica, Panama, Colombia. As we can see the consensus with the dark reds and purples. We can also see rainfall in store for sections of Nicaragua. We can also see it for sections of Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula. We see that both the year and the GFS models are in consensus with that forecast. You can also see rainfall in store for sections of Venezuela, Guyana right there. Some rainfall in store for portions of the Eastern Caribbean as well. So anywhere from St. Vincent northward to Barbados, sections of St. Lucia, Martinique, Dominica, Guadeloupe getting in on the mix. And we see that both the year and the GFS months are showing this. You can also see some rainfall in store for sections of Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, sections of the Bahamas, Cuba and florida too and we see that both the year and the gfs models are in consensus with this forecast i know that when they're in consensus like this the chances of it actually happening are much higher all right so that's it for today thanks for watching